If you want to have great control over the full range of your saxophone and develop a really strong embouchure, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Donna Schwartz from DonnaSchwartzMusic.com, the site for practical tips and solutions to improve your music performance skills. One of the key exercises that you can do to develop a really strong embouchure and get control over your tone is to practice your mouthpiece. Now, for some of you, you may be thinking, well, I can only get squeaky sounds out of this thing. How is that going to help me develop my embouchure or to control my tone? Believe it or not, for each mouthpiece, meaning tenor mouthpiece, alto, barry, and soprano, there's a suggested pitch that you should be able to reach um, for each mouthpiece. On the tenor, it's a concert G uh, in the fifth octave. For alto, it's concert A in the fifth octave. For barry, it's concert D. Sometimes it could be concert E flat as well. It, it kind of depends there. That one's a little bit of a tricky one. And for soprano, it's a C. C in the uh, probably fifth or sixth octave. So you want to try to get as close to that pitch as possible. Now, one of the tools that you can use besides just playing your mouthpiece, because this can get pretty loud, right? is the Jazz Lab Silencer. Now, I am not uh, an endorser for them, but let me just show you a little booklet that comes with this. It's the Jazz Lab Silencer there. But it's a great tool to use when you want to work on your mouthpiece playing. Because what it does, this is great if you live in an apartment, a condo, or if you travel often and you're staying in a hotel, or if you have a young child in the house, or dogs that get upset, it mutes the sound. So it's like a mute. It's like a mouthpiece mute as one of my students called it. And this initial sound of will now sound big difference. Okay. So I always recommend this tool, the Jazz Lab Silencer, because it's great for when you're in those types of situations where you can't play loud. All right. But I had some questions, not only from my own students, but also people that subscribe to my YouTube channel, as well as my website at DonnaSchwartzMusic.com. And a bunch of people are having difficulty using this great tool when working on their mouthpiece, playing their mouthpiece exercises. And at my first thought, to be honest with you, was, I don't understand though. It's, it's actually, to me, it makes it easier it makes it easier for me personally to control the mouthpiece playing. But for some folks, they can't get a sound out at all. For some folks, they can't move around much. So let me give you a couple of tips. And again, I, I'm not an endorser for them, but um, I think this is such a great tool. Okay, first thing, when you're putting this together, there's a whole bunch of, of inserts based on the type of mouthpiece you have. So there's one for alto, tenor, clarinet, and barry. That's very cool. Okay, so for tenor, I'm obviously going to use the tenor insert. You've got the housing unit over here. Okay, you have this piece. Notice it has the hole on the bottom too. Okay, I just put this in. I take um, the extension for whatever mouthpiece I'm using, whether it's tenor, alto, or etc. Okay, this notch is going to it's going to go in here and it's going to lock in to this area right here. So I put this in. I twist it. I lock it. Okay. There, there we go. I've actually, honestly, since I play tenor and alto and I go back and forth when I teach both those instruments, I've usually just had the alto extension and I use my tenor on that as well and it's perfectly fine. But just let's keep it simple. So I've got the tenor extension on. I just place the mouthpiece on top. Now the first mistake that people make is that they cover this hole in the back with their pinky and then they wonder, why they're not getting a sound. <laughs> well, you're blocking the sound from coming out. So that's the first thing. So the best way to hold this is, you know, three fingers on top, um, thumb on the bottom. I like to, they suggest that you hold it like this. I like to have a finger or something on the mouthpiece just to make sure. Okay. And when I use the alto extension or the alto holder, I need to do that because the tenor mouthpiece is a little bit loose on there. I tend to hold it like this 
or like this on the top. It's perfectly fine. Now, I also don't want to necessarily, you don't want to make a fist. It just makes it a little harder. You're covering up some of the holes over here as well, where the air may be escaping. So I just, again, few fingers on the top, thumb on the bottom. That's all. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now, the main reason why I feel, and again, I, you know, every person's individual, every person has individual issues. Um, the main reason why I feel some people may not be, to be able to get a sound out from the Jazz Lab silencer is because they're not using the right lip position and they're playing by using pressure from their bottom teeth as opposed to developing that strong embouchure using your corner muscles, using lots of breath support. Um, I tend to use the Joe Allard method for playing as opposed to the, um, uh, the, like the ooh embouchure that's in the art of saxophone playing by Larry Teal. And I find that that works best for me and for my students. But I find that people that tend to bite in order to produce their tone, they tend to stop the reed from vibrating when they do that. And it becomes very evident when you're playing the mouthpiece. All right, and it becomes really, really evident when you put the silencer on because nothing will come out. So that's the first thing you need to check. Breath support. Now, when you're putting the silencer on, you're going to need more breath support than usual. Why? Well, let me give you a background story. I also play trumpet. I've been playing trumpet uh, just about all of my life. Trumpet is a high resistance instrument. Okay, so when I blow out, the air is pressurized more as opposed to a tenor, okay, where it's not. This reminds me of trumpet playing because this provides resistance. Saxophone players, unless you're playing soprano, which has some more resistance, you're not used to the resistance from the silencer. So you're going to need to really work on your breath support. Take deeper breaths and really push that air. Okay, use those abdominal muscles and just push that air out or else again, you're not going to get a sound. So I find the resistance and the lip position are the key factors for affecting people when they want to play uh, using the silencer. A lot of folks say, oh, I could play great when I just play on the mouthpiece. But when they play on here, nothing comes out. So that should tell you something. That should tell you, look at your lip position. That should tell you, think about your breath support. All right, are you using your corners or are you leading with your teeth? But when you first start playing the silencer, I'm gonna suggest that you try for the suggested pitch and you really work on your breath support and get that embouchure strength going, okay? Because this is an amazing tool. If you want more information on that, there's links below. Check out my Get a Killer Saxophone Tone course because you will truly uh, get a killer saxophone tone and have a great full sound from the lowest notes through the highest notes and the course sets you up for playing altissimo with a nice strong embouchure. Thanks for joining me. On that note, take care. Have a great day.